What's good? Welcome to the Loophole channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making a mini drum kit out of sounds that I recorded using my field mic. I recently bought this Zoom H4N portable mic. Uh, it's great for field recordings. It's great for recording, you know, percussion sounds just around the house. Um, or if you want to record something professionally. And I took that to the Airbnb that we went to a few weeks ago with all the other YouTubers. I couldn't really sleep the first night, so I just went around and recorded a lot of random things from throughout the house. Um, and I thought I'd turn them into drum sounds, basically. I think what I'm going to do is make a mini drum kit with it and then put that in this week's mailing list. Uh, so I'll leave a link to sign up to that in the description. The house was full of weird things that I can make sounds out of. So, you know, I had a pool table, but it also had, you know, different ornaments and things that, you know, I could make some crazy sounds out of. So that's what I did. I've got the raw audio files from the Airbnb pulled up in FL here. What I'm first going to do is just remove the noise uh, and then we'll go about doing something more creative. If you want a full dedicated video towards how I make drum sounds, you know, just leave that down in the comments and I'll happily do a video on that. So this is the file I think from the pool table. Um, let me have a look at the transients. Yeah, that's definitely from the pool table. So the first thing I think I'd wanna do is remove the noise. So let's just select a period with not too much going on. Just press this brush icon, acquire noise profile, deselect it and then press uh, accept. But I think what I want to do is reduce the amount just because sometimes when you reduce some noise, it takes away some nice frequencies as well. Uh, so I'm just going to reduce the amount and then press except it takes a little long to denoise usually, uh, especially if the audio file is pretty long. So if you see now, if you go back to the same area, there's really not much noise going on here. Um, now when I play some of the more obvious transients, there's nothing irritating clouding it up. So what I'm going to do is select this area, pull it down, and then we've got our first kind of raw percussion sample. I'm going to do the same for any other transients basically here. I don't think that would be a nice drum sound, so I'm not going to select it. I could use a click. I, I think what I'm going to do is I want to be more creative this video. I would just use that click otherwise, but yeah, no, I'm not going to use it for one of these sounds. I'll select that anyway. I don't know if I'll turn that into a drum sound, but I'll select it anyway, just because it has potential. So with here, I'm gonna select this one, and then I'm also gonna select this period here from when I think the ball was potted. That could be a cool snare or percussion sound. Great, so that's everything from this sample here. I'm just gonna remove this. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other four selections, but um, I'll probably just skip through that and then show you the end result. So I've just finished going through all of the recordings. Uh, I've ended up with 55 different tracks. I'm definitely not gonna use all of them. I'm probably just gonna go through now, find the ones that I like the most, and then see what I can turn them into. So I can see already with this, the only part of this that I want to keep is this part here where it strikes the ball. So I'll put that right until the next transient starts. And I'll start it about here. Drag this over. Let's just put this over here. And then fade this one out here. Make sure that it fades in so there's no clicks. and then we'll save that for later. Normalize this. That can be used as a clap. So I'm gonna pull that over here. Just normalize this. Fade it in here so there's no clicks. Do the same for when we're fading out. On to the next one. And I'm going to keep on doing this, finding all the best samples, pull them aside, and then we'll edit them from there. Okay, so that took a lot longer than expected. I did end up making a drum sample for pretty much every single one of these recordings. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of these and then bring these guys over 
So within here we've got lots of sounds, lots of percussive sounds pretty much here. Now some of them are completely ready to go. I could stick some of them in a pack as, you know, perk sounds, for example, and they'd be absolutely fine. But some of them are a bit more interesting and ones that I might want to turn into, so like for a hi-hat, for example, or a kick drum or a snare or something like that. So I think I had one that was, it wasn't that one. It might've been the one before. That could definitely be turned into a percussion sound. Uh, this one, I think, if I reverse it, yeah, I can already hear that as a hi-hat. I'm just going to turn it down a bit. So what I'm going to do for this is just record this out uh, like this. So I'll just press on input and then just click on it here. So we've got that one hi-hat sound now. So I'm gonna go to audio editor, normalize it, just take out this, I think at the end, and fade it out and drag it into mixer number one. So then we've got this sound here. First thing I wanna do, take out the lows. And to be honest, that's almost ready to go to be, a, you know, its own hi-hat sample. Might just bring up the highs a bit more maybe introduce some kind of flanger so let's just pull in a free flanger maybe halfway and make it more mono and i think i want to take away these uh, not completely but definitely a bit you can hear that kind of hollow sound down there so i'm just going to reduce these so let's record it again Great. So I've got my first hi-hat sound. And it's really as easy as that, to be honest. Just make sure removing all of these noises here. Fade it out. Make sure it starts at the start here. So just delete these. This isn't essential. I just like to do this for all my sounds just so I know that they're completely fully edited. Uh, and I don't really need to do anything else with them once I drag them into my beat. So it sounds kind of like a drill hi-hat. So I'm just going to go through a lot of these other sounds, make sure they're all sounding clean, usable, and I'll probably highlight the more interesting ones uh, in the video. So for example, with this sound, I quite often use something called a transient shaper, which changes how the sound basically comes in and leaves. There's a couple that I like to use. One is called Panks. The other one is Knock. Uh, it's a great plugin by Decap that just came out. Picked up both of these around Black Friday, so I got them for a little bit cheaper. But neither of them was crazy expensive, to be honest. Panks is a little less busy, I guess. But if I wanted to make the sound hit harder, for example, or just increase the transient here, or decrease it. So I think I want this a little bit harder. Like that, that's hard enough. And then I think I want to reduce the length a bit. Not that much. Just a bit and then yeah i like that so i'll record that one so i'm just going to normalize it and do the same thing i did before pretty much just trim the edges delete all of this stuff here and then try and figure out where it fades out properly which to me seems about here so i'm just going to delete this stuff, fade it out. And that means that, you know, there's no dead space, but it doesn't mean that I cut it off before the tail fully ends. Like that. That sounds great. Pull that in. That's the second sample. So right now we've got a hi-hat and a kind of snare slash perk sound. So right now I'm using the recording of the snooker ball. I think what I want to do is pan it slightly to the left, just so we get it more central. Maybe make it more mono. And I want to use this as more of a snare type sound. So what I'm going to do is use a wave shaper, bring out the highs, make it more saturated. Could definitely use that as a kind of like 80s snare type sound. Uh, I think I want to just make it around for less. I'm going to introduce a room reverb.
Just adding a lower octave at a low mix, just to give more presence. And I think one more wave shaper. I don't really like this little air sound at the end. It's very, very subtle, but I don't like it. So I think what I'm gonna do is drag this into a new sound here. And then, great, like that sound a lot. So in this case, I'm creating more of like a stump sound, to be honest. Um, I think I might add a wave shape run to increase saturation again. I'm gonna remove the very, very low parts of this sound just because it's gonna get too muddy otherwise. And I think I might stick it in a spring reverb. Okay, so this has completely changed the sound up. So I don't think I want it to be a sub anymore. I just really like the sound of this as, I don't know, I, I don't really know, it's some kind of impact sound. It's tuned to C, so, you know, we'll see where it goes. Great, so I like how this is turning out. I think I wanna just drop some of the lows again just to make it less muddy. Great, this is like an impact sound now. So I'm thinking I might put around 20 sounds in this mini drum kit. So there's obviously more than 20 sounds to choose from in here. Also, this is gonna take quite a long time to make these sounds. So I think I'm gonna stop the recording here. It's gonna to be too much content to put into one video if I record the process of making all 20 of these sounds. But I hope that's given you an insight into how I make drum sounds personally. And yeah, I'll definitely do more of these videos with more of an insight into specific sounds or you know, like snares or hi-hats or whatever. Um, but if this video was helpful to you or if you enjoyed it at all, give it a like, uh, subscribe to see more of this content in the future. Also remember to click, uh, there's a little bell icon next to the subscribe just so you're notified when we drop a new video. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next one.